Hey everybody, opening of day two, I'm coming to you from the future. Uh, it's already getting dark out here. Uh, today's project will be getting lifts in place, uh, finishing the uh, base rough in of the pressure washing system so we can order all our custom lines. Uh, we'll get started on the Swiss Tracks flooring as uh, part of our big plan. And so we hopefully we can get all the lifts in. We might get you know a couple of them and we'll, we'll see how it goes. The lifts is a, are a big project to move into place because of how heavy they are. But the, ep, the, uh, the garage is already epic. Can't wait to uh, start to get all the really cool stuff in. So uh, you're gonna wanna hang around for this one because uh, lots of stuff is gonna get done today. Hey Mike, did you leave a little nugget in that last video? And people that know that know, yes. There's a little nugget of me joking around with you that s slipped in there. Some, someone, someone didn't quite edit that out until the last minute. I'm gonna start installing the second pressure washer now, cutting the cord to a custom length. So I'm gonna take, have to take them back off to anchor them to the shelves, but just getting them up here, getting them centered, and uh, getting the cord length taken care of. So as I, I'm gonna try to obviously match that one. So we're gonna go right there. I'm like, what do you, you have to say about the warranty situation when you do this? Um, if you cut your cord, that's uh, on you. Uh, it's, the warranty is now void. Sorry, Fred. Don't worry, we'll take care of you because I cut them. But for anybody else, I guess, technically speaking, the warranty could be void. But they do that to get you a listing, right? Yeah. Because they have to be protected because there's water going through them. But we have the same protection with the GFCI outlets. So I don't feel too bad about removing them. And it looks so much better having cords custom length. You know, it's not like you're going to use them anywhere else. Yeah. They're always going to stay here, right? So, all right, so let's get this down. And... So what I use, right angle plugs. So I buy these. Uh, let's get in close for the people. These are actually Home Depot. Okay. I mean, we'll have to buy them at Home Depot. Leventon makes them for everybody else too. So while we do have a 15 amp dedicated, I mean a 20 amp dedicated, there, there's really only a 15 amp uh, plug on these, so. So, this is open up the strain relief. There it is. So, do first get the cord in there. When you strip back the wiring on the cord too, you don't want to go too crazy with how far you strip it back. Less is more. So I go about a, about an inch and a quarter is all. And you want to cut it with the parallel with the wire and not quite go all the way through if you can avoid it. Something about like that. Then you can get the last little bit by spreading it open. See, I didn't go quite through like that, quite through the jacket. That way you don't have to worry about nicking the insulation on the wires. You ever done this before, Mike? No, Mike, I haven't. It's the first time. First time. I just watched it on YouTube last night, matter of fact. Yeah, there's a guy called Mike. Yeah. He's done a few of these, you know, so I just try to watch him and learn, learn as I go, Mike. I know, you know what I do is I plan out for the day, the next day, what I'll be doing, yeah, and then I just do some YouTube researchings, yeah, you know. And then I have to edit all the mistakes, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, yeah, this is like, what this is what, take 12 now, yeah. Mike? Yeah, we've bought 12 credits and cut 12. 12 cords, yes, that's correct. Yeah. That's right, that's how we do it. It's a lot of magic, you know? Well, it's because, you know, i got to make you look good. Well, Mike, you don't have to, but you I do it out of the kindness of your heart. Good. I appreciate that, yeah. you know? Yeah. All right, so that's about all I, I strip them back. Yeah. Twist them. So I should, I should do. Put on, your... Put on my eyes, Mike. Eyeballs. Yeah. I hate having to carry these stupid glasses around, if I'm being honest. Just out of, uh, I mean, habit, I always go ground first. Don't know why, but I always have. If you always go ground first, there's no chance you're ever going to put it on the wrong terminal, you know? Okay, and the way this plug works is you can actually clock it however you want out of the right angle. You know, you can actually have the ground up, you can have it to the side, every which way. So, 
and all you want is the wire just long enough that it can move out of the way for the screw. That's a crow, Michael. Crow yeah, I don't like them. No They're annoying. I don't know, some part of the country, I don't know if a raven is a, and a crow are the same. They kind of look the same. Okay, so there we go. So that's, and you just simply tighten down this back screw. Make sure it's still clocked correctly. Okay, and you come around and tighten the strain relief. Pretty straightforward, Michael. I think, uh, I think I've done thousands of plugs on cords over my lifetime. Yeah. It just goes the extra mile to have it clean instead of not having extra cable. Agree. All that extra wadded cable, or or do the old Maddie Mormon method that he used to do, where he'd cut it out in the middle, shrink to, and big old wad with shrink tubing. Yeah. But we've uh, we've refined the process now, Michael. So, make sure this is off. There we go. And it should. There we go. All right, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to next I'm gonna get the all right, anti-vibration clamps and clamp the, the legs and get it through drilled. Take the shelf off, get those connected, and then put them back up, and then they'll be, they'll be set permanently, and then I can start on my plumbing. But yeah, that looks super clean. Yeah, no, this is this is a good height. Well, because we don't have the CR spotless under here to worry about, we're going to have a reel here. Um, we don't have to worry about height at all. We can make it at whatever height we want. Obviously, we want to go too low because we are putting a reel here. But theoretically, if we weren't putting a reel here, we could even go lower. We could probably put this one here. You know, that's the beauty about. Like a reel inside, right? We could, sure. Yeah, you could put this one down lower. Or maybe not quite that low, but maybe this one like right around here and have this one like here, like eye level. It's the beauty about the custom install. You can kind of do it however you want. And if the DI is to the side, it gives you more, uh, more flexibility. So that's supposed to, our prototype DI is supposed to show up here tomorrow, I think. Yeah, a little preview. He's going to be the guinea pig. Are these, oh, is this, is, is this custom here, these rubber? No, they come on them. They do, yeah. So the only thing we really do that's any different is, is install these clamps so that they, there's, they don't ever vibrate off anyway, but, you know, yeah, it's, did, sec it's security. Be, there's yeah. nothing, there's no way they're going to fall. Yeah. I mean, they don't really move. So... Yeah, this, this will be close. I think so. It's gonna be my favorite spot when I visit, Fred. <laughs> All right, so we got the bottom clamp in. So now I'm just pre-drilling for the the top one. Okay. We send them. Send the kits with the. The screw in the wing nut, stainless steel, of course. All right, that's it. So that's not going anywhere. So I think next I'll do probably install the reel. So I try to tuck it up here in such a way that I'm not worried about hitting my knuckles on the Upright, so I keep the uprights. What I I like them, I like them two and a half inches from the uh, upright to the edge of shelf, and that usually plays out pretty well if you're tucking your reel up underneath because it doesn't interfere and you can tuck it up pretty tight without having fear of hitting your hand. So I think in this situation, that's going to be a pretty good spot right there. What do you think, Mike? How's that look? Yeah. Yeah. Nice and tidy. Yep, nice and tidy. That's what we like. All right, so you don't have to worry about hitting your smack in your hand. All right. So I'm pre-drilling for the uh, lags. I'm using five sixteenths, five sixteenths by two and a half. Flag bolts. 
And what I like to do is get them pre-drilled and then run them in so they're easier to, because I end up having to use a ratchet because you can't really get in there with an impact. So, so I think I run them about a half inch from all the way in. Now I'll go grab a, a ratchet and we'll uh, get them installed. I found some, Fred had some stainless steel, 516 stainless steel by one, I think these are one and a half inch flat wa uh, fender washers, so these will look nice on there. So we'll use these. And I, I say the hex would the hex would work, but it grabs by, you know, just the outside of the hex. As you can see, it's just gonna work, so washers are ideal for this. Sorry, Michael. It's all right. I bump my head on your camera quite often, don't I? Yeah. You get in those close shots and I'm not paying attention. And this is why I run them in first because it makes it easier to run them in by hand with a ratchet after the fact. It's really riveting content, Mike. I suppose you'll edit most of this out, huh, Michael? Mm, yeah. Comment down below if you think we should keep all this footage in of, of turning every bolt from start to finish. Also comment down below if you think I should get the camera and film Mike doing some of this stuff. Hey, you know, Mike, hmm? I don't want to take away from your fame. You're my fame. Oh, brother. You're famous in your, uh, in your own right, Michael. It is, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, I gotta tighten the other two, but I'm just making sure we're, we are level. So here's where we are. We've got our lines mocked up. I got the line links made, uh, figured out so we can have curated make um, the proper lines, all custom, every one of them is custom length. So what I'm doing now is I laid out for, this is where our other valves are going. We still need another 90, uh, threaded 90 that's gonna go here. Um, but this, this valve is gonna essentially go right there, okay? So this is gonna feed into the main part of the garage. So we're gonna come up here, use my laser, and I'm marked a spot 90 inches up, straight above this fitting. So I'm gonna poke a hole through, and then that's where we're gonna run our, our high pressure line through. And then we're actually gonna run it through sleeving um, two inch Prevost piping. So all powder coated green to match the cabinets, you know. So I'm gonna pop this hole in now. We've got it laid out based on what I'm seeing in pictures. So I'll kind of show you here what we've got. So this is all the blocking they had in place, which they did a good job blocking the heck out of all this. So right now our pressure washer is sitting right here, right? So I'm gonna come up here next to these outlets, straight up at 90 inches, poke a hole through. And the other side of this, there's a wall that comes in, comes in eight inches. So we're gonna be about an inch and a half off of that wall, because this wall comes in a little bit. Um, so the way I've got it laid out, it should work out. So I'm just gonna try that now. And uh, you know, work, worst case scenario, Mike, I know a guy that can fix drywall. So, so let's, uh, let's see where we are here. Bingo, there we are. And there is no wood, so we'll be able to go right through. All right, so timeline on when we're getting the rest of the, the, rest of the parts to do this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get one last length, which is the long hose is gonna run the whole length of this shop darn near. Um, and then we're gonna call curated, get all the hoses made, get whatever fittings we need left uh, to complete the job, and we're gonna get that shipped out tomorrow, overnighted for a Saturday delivery. Now, to make things simpler though, like- Here we go again. If you were to buy this package, you wouldn't need custom links because it's already figured out for you, right? It's because we're doing the DI, is that- Mike, I'm really tired of explaining things to you. Again, no, I mean, really, it's really know. getting, this is really getting old, Mike. <laughs> oh, I'm just joking. All right, so yes, if you typically, if you order the custom, the dual pressure wash solution or the single, 
you're not gonna have to do all this. Yeah. You can just, it's gonna come with a hundred foot hose on the reel. All the other hoses are figured out for you. You set the shelves where we tell you and everything's gonna line up. This is just because it's custom, custom. Custom on top of custom. That's what you do. Mike. That's what we do. We're adding features, Mike. A good feature, Mike. She is, Mike. I like this little vest you purchased for her. Yeah, you didn't wear your matching shirt today, though. <laughs> did. Why didn't you wear it? Yours doesn't have the bow on it, though, right? Only on Friday. Oh, okay. Yours doesn't have the bows. No. Or the or the cute little uh, rhinestone hearts. Mm. Okay, kiddo. So what's this? Oh, this is bread? This is actually mine. Uh, this is this yours? yours? No, no, this is mine. Oh, okay. Mine. Wow, what are these? What are these here? Are these treats? Those are, yeah, those are, that's fuel. Wow. <laughs> that's oh fuel. my goodness gracious. It would be rude not to. Like, what is that? That, that is... looks like a very appetizing, yeah, you know, <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> Those are ham and cheese croissants. All right, so what I did was I drilled the hole from the back side, from the other side. Um, looked at the previous uh, uh, photographs of how they framed this out. So there's a void here. There's a stud here where this outlet is nailed to. And then obviously this wall ties in, so there's a nailer here. Um, so I came over, laid out the back side, drilled the hole from the other side, so now I'm just clearing it from this side. I poked a hole, obviously, through it with the long screwdriver. Now we're through. Now we have a straight shot through to run our pressure washer hose that's going to feed his run down there. So we're gonna bring this up and come into our big Prevo tube, basically. It's gonna be just like a chase. And we'll run that, run that pressure washer hose through that, which is different. We haven't done that before. Yeah. And it's like, I think it's about that big it's around. A, yeah, it's it's, it's large, all powder coated, so that'll look cool. So the, the pressure washer, the large one's gonna go up top and the uh, airline will go below it. So the airline's gonna come from compressor room, come out, come across. I'll put a T in, it'll go into this room. I'll probably do a drop and then a, a T down and then 90 in uh, for that room. And then we'll come around and end up putting a manifold over next to where the, uh, the uh, pressure washer um, line will terminate. So he's not gonna do a reel there. He's gonna do a, um, just basically, we're gonna do a, a, an on-off valve, a two-way valve, and a, a, a QD on the end of that. Okay, so he'll just plug right in, open the valve, and he'll be ready to go. Yeah, Yeah. so I'm just gonna poke this through, and then we're gonna, we're gonna use this. I'm gonna reference to see how long the line needs to be. So based on this, I can, I'm gonna come up like this, but there's gonna be an escutcheon that goes around this hose, so it hides this hole. So we're gonna come up and then 90 into, or you know, turn into the Prevo piping. So it's gonna be something like that, but up there. So it'll kinda, of, it'll kinda of look like that. I'll pin it right against the corner. Um, it's gonna be black hose instead of blue. That's the other thing he wanted to do black. So everything's gonna be black and green. Is now, I, I know how long this hose is, right? So, so I'm gonna make a, make a mark where this hose terminates, which is right here, the dot, and then I'll mark the other side of the dot, and then I'll, then I'll know what it takes to get me through. I'll measure the length from where I come out there to the top of the valve, and then I'll measure from this dot up to where I'm gonna turn into the Prevo. So I'm gonna make a, a mark there and there, and then I'll add all these distances up between the two marks, and that'll give us an overall length. Another 99 inches, minus two, so 74 inches. What is it? 474.5 inches. If we divide that by 12, 39 and a half feet. Maybe it's 39.54 feet. So you made me this frothy drink. Yeah. So tell me, explain to me what's in here. That's your grass milk, half uh -huh. and half. Uh -huh. But the first thing I do is I run the Nespresso. Intenso, right? So it's intenso, intenso mode. Espresso. So it's extra then, strong. I, but then I cut it early. 
Okay. Because the ratios. Ah, so you need the ratios right. So then it's that, and then. And then I let it go. Then you the right froth, side. froth my grass yeah, milk bit, half and half. Just for a cold foam. Mm-hmm. And then you foam it. All right. But I put ice in first. Let me try it. That's pretty good. You like that? Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get stuck making these for me. It's good stuff, isn't it? You we didn't we it. didn't catch on camera what I had earlier. What did you have? I found a uh, cinnamon roll bun that is better than Helen's. Uh, it's the evidence has been deleted though. We didn't get a single cook of it. I know, but let me tell you, I'm gonna get another one before we go home. Oh, are we? I may I may I may bring some home with me. We're gonna need to make a stop. Mike, I'm sorry, the bake shop, eh? But these are Those these are, are next a level. Type, they are. These are these okay. are these are like. I don't know what they do, but they make the outside of the bun kind of crispy with buttery, and then there's pecans on it with some sort of caramel something. And then you put some Kerrygold butter. Yeah, I did. I melted Kerrygold butter. Fred, what is the name of that shop that you got those cinnamon rolls from? Uh, Bob's Well Bread. Bob's well bred. Yeah, it's like three miles. So Bob's well bred. Bob was the ex CEO of Sony Pictures. Sony Pictures. There you go. So he's now making buns for us. Bread. It's Bob Oswald. Bob Oswald. Sourdough. I will say his sourdough bread also. It's good. Next level. So Fred, you're going to be responsible for me having to go on a diet when I get home, because yeah. you're well, feeding us very well. Yeah, that's, that's I lost doing. weight when we did Adam's job, and I'm gaining <laughs> it all back here. Put it back on. Yeah. 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 So he's bringing a cherry picker over, an engine hoist, right? Engine so, hoist. so what we'll do is we'll come over the top with a couple of straps and pick up, pick them with the engine hoist, and then we can set them in the pits rather than dragging them in. So that's less 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 likely uh, to screw our backs up because those the noose bomb. I think the nine, the jumbo nine is. I want to say it's. The whole thing is like a thousand pounds, so I'd imagine those each are probably 350, 400. So I'm uh, I'm almost done with the mic. It's really good. This be shade tree engineering right here. This is uh, Maddie's hurt back. Otherwise, we'd be muscling in here. I guarantee it. He probably bought that just to mess with me. He wrote neon. Fragile. Are you trolling me? Oh, yeah. I think something I think something may have mistakenly gotten shipped to your address here. Oh, the sign? Yeah. This was a gift. Okay. Oh shoot. He's messing with us then. Yeah, he's trolling me for sure. So Fred, Fred went to get us some uh, some hydraulic fluid. We're gonna hook up our new spawn controller, and then we'll be able to lift, get the lift up, get it in position, drill our holes, and then um, once we get it all in, we'll have to go have the hydraulic lines made. Cause we're gonna have any custom lines in order to come up. Mike, come here. I'm probably gonna ruin my shirt. Yeah. Got hydraulic fluid all over it, but my game plan, yeah. you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take a step back, Mike. Yeah. Maybe install some Swiss tracks flooring, which is basically means I'll take a break. Yeah. Like and uh, you know, that's what I plan to do. But in reality, I won't be able to do that. Hooking the lines back up here, and then we can get it set back down and. The plan is to get it lifted up so I can move it around. 
track. So this door, this door track is, is outside, or the door comes outside the little, the little water break lip. The center big door actually comes down onto the, you know, on the garage grade, right? Uh, and so this door is dictating our, our position. And so all we did is just kick the tile. So close the door, kick the tile up to it so it creates a nice seal. And then we'll have just an inch gap here. What is that, two inches? I think that's the way to go. The other option is we kick that past the door, but the problem is, is you'll see it. So you'll see the tile sticking up from, you know, underneath the door from outside. So I would rather have a little gap here than seeing the Swiss track sticking outside the door. Got any input on that, Kyle? I think that's, that's so, the way I would do it. So do you want to do black here or black here? There. Here? So two, two grays? Yeah, because we've got, uh, uh, we've got cabinets that are going there. Yeah. And we've got the walls that pop us out. You're doing two tiles at a time every you're 15 having, minutes. You're having your dessert again. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like my hands are dirty. My hands are dirty right now. I know. You've been you've done some man's work. I yeah. was witness to it. So when you're setting up your floor, you want to set it up against the garage door. Uh, and so our center garage door is our focal point. That's what centers everything up. We have to decide where our border is going to go. But you want to make sure we get you, you buy looped edge pieces. So the edge pieces have a loop like this. Uh, and so if the loops are facing toward the back, uh, and then I make sure that I have my loops, loops also facing, so toward the back and toward the left, if I start in the right hand corner, what it allows me to do, see I have loop, loop, and then I can just rapid fire set my tiles in place. If it was the other way around, if it was like this and the pegs were out, I'd have to lift up every tile and slide under. So this makes our, our install much more efficient. And so then we can carry the floor all the way to the, you know, from, from basically from right corner to back left corner and make our tile installation much quicker. The other thing a lot of people ask about is the, uh, the dirt, you know, the, the, the dirt. So all the dirt will fall. Remember this tile is three quarters of an inch thick. So there can be a whole lot of dirt under here that you can't see that you can address when that, you know, when you have time. So I can come back and just sweep the floor whenever I'm ready to. So the dirt can sit underneath. I can just vacuum it up. You can do it once a week if you want to. I do it once every six months or so, maybe once a year. And uh, the floor always looks clean because the ribs are round. So this is why I, don't, I, don't, I never do the smooth. They have a flat version. The flat version negates a lot of the, the function of this and the flat, the grooves, the holes are smaller and the dirt tends to sit on top. Whereas this, dirt falls, hits, falls underneath. Notice the opposing slats as well. So the grid goes left and right. And so unless it's a really tiny screw, the beauty of Swiss tracks is if I drop a screw on this floor, it freaking bounces and goes rolling all, who knows where. On Swiss tracks, the screw usually falls and you know, falls within a tile. Uh, and so a lot of the sort of common misconceptions about the tile 
are a bit counterintuitive, like it, it, it just doesn't make sense until you've lived with it for a while. He's gonna spill some oil, you know, especially underneath the lifts, and you just pop the tile up. We actually have a floor tile popper that our friend up in uh, Saskatchewan makes for us, and that floor tile popper allows you to easily pop up a tile and clean up underneath if you needed to. All right, so I've got the, the 9,000 pounds in, the jumbo nines are in. I've got them centered front to back in the pits and side to side. So um, Fred went and got us some hydraulic fluid. So we'll go ahead and fill, fill them up. We can get those up in the air, get them anchored down. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get these in this pit and take that part and put those in that pit. So what I think I'm gonna do is fill it up with hydraulic fluid, temp up the power, get them up in the air, and maybe we can lock them in place, get them up high enough that we can lock them in place, and then we can manhandle them into the pit rather than having to use the cherry picker. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. If, if, it, if we can't, if we can't manipulate them uh, by hand, then we'll uh, let them, set them down and take the lines off and do it that way. Either way, we have to disconnect the lines to get the lines through here. But if we can separate them up in the air, it'd be a lot easier than trying to do what I did over there, which is lay on the ground and get them with wrenches. So. That's the plan. So yeah, the tank on this one is down here. <clears throat> These are the manual version. Can we turn it to a more convenient location for me? Oh, I see. I'm gonna pour, you're gonna hold. Okay, I see. You can bad for the lower back. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't bringing the chair over here for you. I <laughs> <laughs> You're not very, you're planning very good because if I go down with a bad back, then what? Yeah. Well, I'll be good by then. <laughs> Gentle. It's less entertaining when it's not spillage. Yeah. Oh, I remember it was it was fun. We were all we were I, I, every time I laugh, it would I would move and it would glug everywhere. Yeah, that was fun. Come kind of right about there. Yep. I'd say that's pretty good. This is a not, not OSHA compliance. Not, not okay. Yeah. yeah, the one where I was joking around with you. Yeah. But people seem to see the kick out. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> oh, that's not good, Michael. The people who know what we're talking about. Yeah, that's not good. No. The one time, Michael. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the power of editing. I tried to make you laugh, and it, it, looked, it backfired, Michael. Yeah. some wood or we're gonna walk it like this yeah I'm gonna get them up and then we'll see what we see it looked good no jank mm -hmm. no jank everything was good on them mm -hmm. we had a batch that were bad news around this time so these are the American made lifts which no longer exist so they'll all look more like the Jumbo 9, which is the European, you know, the German made. So if you order one from this point forward, um, this is really great. Uh, this is the same lift that I have. Nussbaum, Germany was purchased by a large conglomeration. Was it uh, Sturdle Coney bought them, I believe, and whoever owns Sturdle Coney. And so now they've gone and they have money backing where they can actually, you know, produce and stock and ship. And so now we're delivering lifts in a couple of weeks. But this, no question, I mean, the Jumbo HF7, I think is the best lift ever made. The nine, you can go 9,000, not really necessary for most people, but if you have a dually or something like that, maybe you want a nine, 9,000 pound lift. All right, Maddie, let's try this now. I got some weight okay. on it. Off of it. You have to come my way. There we go, right about there, I guess, huh? Uh, Easter, an Easter egg, as we call it. Uh -huh. Easter egg that doesn't require a whole lot of hunting, it's right there. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> well, it's gone now. It'll be in the Facebook group. Oh, great. It lives forever. <laughs> That's good, com good com comedy, Michael. Can kind of lift it just high enough that it'll hit those bolts, maybe. It's better than trying to break our backs. Oh, Maddie's already working injured. He was trying to CrossFit with the Amazon women and they... 
he got he got beat up a little bit. I'm feeling a little better. So now this can go. Oh, 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 oh. We get them centered and then we're good. All right. Now I'll just get the tape measure out and we'll get them nice and close. This is the tape Yeah. This is this the first take, Mike? Gotcha. One and seven sixteenths. One and seven sixteenths. That's it. All right. I'm blocking these up so I can disconnect the lines and get them through from one side to the other through these uh, through these holes here. So, but I've realized that I've blocked one of the holes, so I'm gonna have to move, move this block here out of the way. So, I may put one, I may go corner to corner, put one in this corner, one in that corner, and then let them down. Same thing on that side. That way they, they set their flatter. So, that's where I am. Just trying to get them situated. So we can uh, get line lengths because we need to have a bunch of hoses made. So that's the plan. Yeah, I think you need a, a skill saw too, a miter saw. Yeah, I need a chop saw. Yeah. Need hey, chop. hey, Kyle, Kyle, he needs a uh, chop, chop, Kyle, he chop needs, saw, table saw. He needs the miter saw and the table saw. Yeah, he needs the he needs the D handle circular saw for sure. All right, <laughs> I'm sitting down. You know what that means? It's, it's We're done. done. So, 8:41. It's a long day. Yeah. I started today at 5.45 a.m. talking to Bill Hamber. Then I talked to my friend about um, um, the local distribution for Obsessed Garage. I'll be working on the details of the Bill Hamber product, getting it here, getting the pricing correct. Did a double podcast with Pan. Talked to my friend uh, about the possibility of Obsessed Home Theater. After that, I've been in the garage all day. So, no gym. My eyes hurt, my back hurts, but that's part of how this goes. You still got to run a business while doing great things. Tomorrow, Mike, we need to get, um, get some footage from Kyle so people can really dig into design, digging into some of the details of this stuff. It's a lot of planning, a lot of uh, stuff to, this is really the easy part. As hard as installing is, it's the easy part. Um, but this is going to be a really special garage, and this video series I think is going to be awesome. But. I think I'm done for today. It's a long day. We'll see you guys in the next episode.